unaendelea kutazama Monday Special Town Hall kutoka kaunti ya Narok ambayo ambapo leo kama tulivyokuarifu awali tunajadili masuala ya mifugo. Awali lilikuwa katika maonyesho hayo ya mifugo pamoja na mnada. Nikapitia tu baadhi ya vibanda na kuweza kujionea ni mambo gani ambayo watu walikuwa wanajifunza katika maonyesho hayo. Hii hapa taarifa hiyo. Gilbert Ngetich from Kiricho County is one in approximately 2,000 farmers who have arrived in Narok County for the inaugural Narok Livestock Show and Auction. He is here to give tips to Narok farmers on how to improve their breeds. So, kiyo na ingomba za hii, iko na 22 months, na tayari iko na, iko na, iko na ndama, na inakamuliwa 25 liters per day. So, iyo laindi jindyo tunayelekea sasa. Bishop Njoroge, also a dairy farmer from Transnzoia County, prides himself with 90 dairy cows on his one-acre farm in Kitale. Curious onlookers are drawn to his stand owing to the massive size of one of his cows, but the profits from his trade are more appealing to the residents of Narok. Kwa sababu ya production ya maziwa, na pia kwa sababu ya breeding, kuuza wasiana. So, so, kwa mwaka na uza wasiana kama ishirini. The thousands of residents who attended day one of the show moved from stand to stand, looking and learning, not just about the profits, but the know-how in rearing profitable livestock. Yikipewa ngobe na chuvi zigine, inazui ya ngobe kupata kopa ya kutosha kwa hile chuvi. So, kampuni migi, kama sisi Medina, chuvi nye tumeleta, tumeleta moja enye haina iyo, iron, di ngobe akiramba, iyo enye haina iron, itapata kapa, ile kopa. E, pata ya kwamba AFC wanapeana loan za kuweza kuwasaidia wakulima hakununua hata e, maziwa. 80% of Narok County livelihoods depend on livestock and this show is keen on ensuring stakeholders interact with the farmers to make it the county of choice in livestock production. Mashirima Kapombe, Citizen TV. Hivyo ndiyo hali livyo kuwa mapema hii leo. Kesho maonyesho hayo ya taendelea mbapo pia Raisu Uru Kenyata atakuwa na fungu wa rasmi maonyesho hayo na mnada wa mifugo. Lakini tunazidi tu kupokea maswali kutoka kwa wananchi mbua mweza kufika hapa. Kuna mze mwaja hapa. Sima malafutu wa mbidi nyalako na soli lako nilipi. Asante sana. Kwa zata kushukuru governor kwa kutolewe maonyesho ambayo tumekaa megambingi bila kuyawana. Bile bile Zizen TV, tunawabariki sana sababu mekuja kutuamusha. Ile suwali yangu ni ya kwamba, kuna kitu ambayo inaniweka hovu zaidi. Tukisikia kwamba, tuataa kujanga factories za kuchinja ngombe na vile vile kweka masiwa mapakiti. Lakini tunawangaya habari ya kuleta investors kutoka uh, inje. Ukiada gezongori ya gezongori ni watu wa kiambu. Ukianda nyeri, maziwa ya watu wa nyeri, ni haa watu wa nyeri, wanao nishio kutu pa 100%. Ukianda ya makuendi, hile ambaye jusi walitengeleza ya kuweka maziwa, na vile vile kuweka matunda, ni hawa wenyewe peke yake. Narok tuko na uwezo, ya kutengeleza factory zetu, iyo ya watu ya Narok, si siyo tuwa kwamba takuwa tukipandia watu uh, chakula, au kuafugia ngombe, alafu wanakuja kuhuza kukula chakula. Sao faida ya mkulima ni katika value addition. Kwa hivyo nikepanda kuwamba governor wetu. Wewe ni investor mkubwa tunakujua. Inja ya Kenya na ndani ya Kenya. Na kama baba wetu itakuwa ni makosa makubwa zaidi. Ukuenda kutuliatea wa Hindi au wa Amerika au wa Zungu au wa toka inje. Waja wajanga factories hapa na situ kwa na uwezo. Hiyo kitu nge kumpanda kuwamba bele ya mugu na bele hawa tu wate. Tuite. Tuungane, tusaidia na pesa za kaundi, za masaimara, factory ya maziwa iwe ni yetu, factory ya ngombe iwe ni yetu, ya unga iwe ni yetu. Si, si watu wengine, wate wandelea kutunyonya, tumenyonya kwa muda murefu. Kwa wadikada kukuamba siku ya leo, usifanya hiyo mbakosa, watoto wetu hata kusamee. Natabu kwa na akili na uwezo, tafadhali tusaidie. Asante, kabla, kabla ilo swali kujibiwa, kuna lingini hapa kutuka kwa kijana. Uh, good evening. Kwa majina ni Sariton Brian Kuluo. Mimi ni mwekezaji katika biashara ya maziwa. Nina kampuni naitwa Sariton Dairies na nina product naitwa Mao Yogo Yogurt. Nadhani kuna wale ambayo wameitumia hapa ndani. 
So kampuni yangu nina factory ambayo ninajenga hapa Total opposite Manyata hapa tu karibu. Lakini funding imekuwa shida nimetafuta investors ambayo tungefanya kazi nao lakini imekuwa shida. Nimeinvest shilingi 1700 katika ile project lakini industry yenyewe imekuwama. Na hii ni project ambayo inaweza employ vijana kutoka 500 na nina shamba na Belbel ninaweza hata ku produce 5000 liters of milk nikipata usaidizi katika county. So ningependa bwana governor, mheshimiwa na senator na viongozi wali, wote wale walio hapa tuweze ku invest in the youth kwa sababu tuna technology na tuna masomo na tuna hayo mengine yote. So to involve the youth tutaweza kusaidika asanteni. Kuna swali lingine hapa kuhusiana na barabara. Jina langu ni William Kipkel kutoka Ward Angareta. Swali wangu yangu nashukuru kwanza na nashukuru governor kwa siku ya leo. Ya fili kwa upande ya maendeleo ya ngombe unasangaa mabarabara ya kupitisha hizo maziwa afike jiji ya town au ya area nyingine kwa upande ya mao au Oloropil Melili. Unaomba tu mheshimiwa wewe mwenyewe kwa siku ya leo ujaribu utembee na gari. Sababu mara nyingine vile unaenda juu tupate usaidishi kutoka kwa kwa sababu naanza kusahau kuona kupata hizo mabarabara upite mwenyewe sitapata maendeleo ya fili serial kuna serial na kuna chakula na ni mzuri utembee na wenyeji uone unausikie kama ngengetia ni serial na kaa tunakuna na ni sito kubwa sana na tosha chakula ya tatu kumaliza upande ya wanyama wanyama kwa upande ya mara vile ulikuwa amesema wananchi wamejenga ma, wa, mashamba yao county angeshukulika na wananchi au na hiyo shamba kuanza kufunga achua, a, a, kwa, kwa siku ya leo unaona wanyama yetu wanaisha na nakuva katika hiyo area na angefaa ulip, tulipe kama bare, kwa county alipe mashamba ya mwisho kabisa kiwanja wachana na hii mashamba na kuwa na maneno county anatosha kulipa shamba ingine na ununulie si shamba ya kuweka maendeleo hii mambo ya kuweka siasa ni mbaya sababu wakati yako umefika kuondoka kwenda serikali nyingine au uende unyumbani ni mzuri hiyo pesa ya mara hii area yetu umesunguka naro simona mashamba watu wananunua kwa nini hapana nunua shamba ya kufanya ile maendeleo unangoja shamba ya pita hapana ngoja asante sana nadhani hao maswali yajibiwe kwanza kabla tuchukue mingine thank you thank you mashirima and uh, a full plate for the governor uh, you want to start with the question on investors from outside and a very specific example have been given the makweni model where they have not spoken about external investors they uh, sort of went back to their own communities and uh, there they are with a lot of investments going the question uh, from the floor there on the investments thank you muze uh, poror uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, one of the work of government is to create an enabling environment for the local people and, and of course even the investors to come and bring their investments uh, to, the, to the counties. And this is what we, we are doing together with uh, with our Naro County Assembly to, through legislation to create an environment where business can thrive. And uh, uh, what I wanted, I can just tell uh, Mr. Poror here, of course, as a county, we give first priority to the local people. There is no question. We give them. But uh, in some investment, you definitely need a uh, some big investors to come and set. For example, if you want to set a serious uh, says a batwa for that matter, maybe it's worth five billion shillings or even ten, definitely you know you must get somebody who has the muscle to come and put that capital. And at the end of the day, th this is why where we are. When we bring those investors so that uh, uh, we have a serious uh, a batwa in this county. First of all, you know we will create more than 3,000 jobs to the youths. We will also create businesses 
to the local people because there'll be a lot of businesses which will happen. The local economy will have impact. So the first beneficiary of any investment, whether local or external, is the local people through the creation of jobs, through the creation of more opportunities and businesses to thrive. If we say that we must wait for a local to get that, you know, in some situation you might wait maybe until Jesus' time come before we get those things. So we definitely will want to give priority to the local, but will also open up in some instances where you need some, some serious investors to come in. Any, anywhere in this country, the big investors are, we are partnering with, with the international community. That's why governments always go out and look for investors to come up and set up businesses. Even in Arok Town, where there is opportunity for the locals to put up. We don't mind anybody coming externally and put a 300 or 400 hotel here. The, the, the jobs, they'll be created, the jobs, they must employ the local people. And, and this is what we are looking. So, uh, Mr. Poror, we must look both within and outside if you have to build this economy. Because we are not looking only at the local. We, Narok, we position Narok. When we say we position Narok as a, large, as a county uh, of choice, in as far as livestock is concerned, uh, we must think also of the markets. Where are you going to sell those products? Yeah, and talking it's, of the markets, not, there was a question. Talking of the markets, there was a question, I, th I think, from the same gentleman on the state of infrastructure around the narrow county. You want yes. to respond to that? Yes, I, I'll talk about yes. it. Yes. So definitely, as much as we also want to encourage within, those ones we cannot, we must get, get partners to come and uh, invest. And, and, and the benefits definitely first will be uh, to our citizens. Uh, uh, Mr. My friend here, Kepukel, I know him very, very well. Uh, he has also asked uh, good questions. First of all, uh, about uh, the infrastructure, yes. Uh, where we got to this county when we came in uh, a few years ago, I think all of us can agree that uh, both levels of government have, have done something better than before. If you go now, Musea uh, Mukaji Yolo, that road from Siyapei to Oljoro, the county government did. Since county government, you have seen how it is. This is what we are going to do across. And we are already in Transmara, we are in Mulot, we are in various places where we want the, to open up all those county roads by making them possible so that the, our people, our citizens are able to move their produce from the farms to the market. So this is what we are working. I must also use this opportunity to thank uh, the president himself, because in the last five years, and you know some of you have been here for, for the last, for, since 63, but it's only during Uhuru's time, President Uhuru's time, that this road from Narok to Sikenani is now done, 60% is under tarmac. It was not done before. The road from Kisiriri to Nakuru, in Narok North, where, uh, where you are taking, you know, the president launched that road, is now on, it's being constructed. So we are going to connect Narok and Nakuru, and our farmers are going to get uh, good roads to transport their produce. You know the roads in Transmara from Kilgoris, Shartuka, Kirindon to Kirindon, uh, to, to Kirindon. The contractor is on site very, doing a very good job. Samrodi de Murua Dikir, those one in Lolonga the ones in Mulot. So we definitely are in a better situation than we were before. Do we still need more? Yes, we do. We, did. We, need, we still need more roads. And we are working both level of government to ensure that we open those roads so that uh, our people can be able to do business and of course uh, transport their goods. I remember the first time we opened as a county government this road from Wasongiro to, uh, to Narosra. The prices of tomatoes actually uh, went up three times after we opened that road. So we know we are very much alive to that and we are going to do that. But as we do that, we also expect uh, the citizens also to expand in their farming, you know, to ensure that more land is put into crops. At the moment, Yes, we are the leaders in, in Bali, we are leading in, in, in wheat, 
but we are only utilizing 28% of arable land in our country, in this county. We want our people to expand uh, and put more land into, into farming. Uh, as for the cereal is an Nengetia, you know that is a, it belongs to the uh, National Cereals and Produce Board. I spoke to the MD and we are working. Uh, I think there was something which was lacking and uh, I think between us that is go going to yeah, happen. Governor, I'll still try to get us to discuss livestock. I know there are a lot of issues that uh, some of the people in the audience are raising about uh, uh, farming in the sense of crops, but I want to, us to keep uh, a bit onto the livestock bit. Let me just take it to the rest of the leaders in the panel uh, here on the issue that also is coming out here on the nature of weather in this county and we are preaching about uh, changing of breeds in a semi-arid um, county honorable lemain uh, thank you very much uh, liners uh, liners uh, I, I want to agree with you in totality that uh, maybe we should concentrate more on trillion livestock and what has brought us here and uh, liners uh, uh, I want to put it this way, that um, in my constituency in Narok South, the national government has put on a tannery that will be open any time. And uh, this tannery is going to employ around a thousand people. And uh, speaking on matters livestock, it is good for us to educate our people that uh, on average in this county we slaughter around 2,000 to 3,000 animals in this county every day. Uh, you can Im imagine the heights and skins that uh, our people don't understand they give it away at a throwaway price. This tannery has come about for it to add value to that particular sector. So this is a sector still on matters livestock that we want to educate our people that uh, in as much as we improve our livestock, we'll be able to get uh, value for money on matters uh, beef. Still, it is good for people to understand that uh, heights and skins is money. They still contribute a lot to our economy. And uh, but, but, but how do you, how do you as leaders, uh, you are a member of parliament, you're seated next to a senator, and just after you there's the governor. How do you as leaders uh, work to create that understanding? Uh, uh, let, let me put it this way. And, um, there is, uh, as I speak, there is an authority that has been formed uh, f because of awareness. Uh, and we call it uh, uh, marketing and produce of, of, of uh, the leather industry. And uh, my friend uh, uh, Kiptarus still understands that. Uh, the national government uh, has gone a, a step further to be able to uh, educate the, 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 the pastoralist community, per se, yeah, all, all over this country. Uh, of course, mind you, uh, the pastoral community occupies 70% of this country. So, per se, there is that education element in that authority to be able to educate these people on matters produce, on matters uh, um, marketing. And, uh, of course, being a Maasai liners, you, you know how we brand our, our livestock. We, everybody, we have branding and all that. So, we, educate, we are trying to educate them that skin is important. So brand uh, 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 economically. Economically means that you really learn how to follow the, what we used to follow in the, uh, in the past, but have a brand that be able to save that particular uh, height and skin uh, uh, because of the economic purpose. Uh, right, yes, Point on, on, yes. The, on Tannery, because we are also working with the uh, ENSDA. Uh, you know that uh, the Maasai before long time I've been using the skin as a, as a mattress, kind of. <laughs> and uh, those days, and I'm a ninja, as a fact. 
Is that and really a, a yes, very important piece of Very important, yeah. Yes. And, and over time, of course, times are changing and the Masais have changed. They have put up houses and are putting uh, good beddings. But there was no, no serious market where the people could go and sell their, 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 their ski, hides and skin. The, the, actually, people have been taking that advantage, you know, because people come and broker from them. They sell it at almost 200 shillings, and they have no alternative. There is nowhere they can sell. This is why uh, that with the establishment of uh, the tannery, and, and that is not the end, because with the tannery, we now need an investor with the capacity, with the skills. This is what uh, I want Mr. Pororo also to understand, that for investors, you are not only looking at capital. Of course, you want capital, but you also want skills and expertise. So you need somebody with capacity who can come and work with that tannery and put, for example, a shoe factory uh, where we can produce shoes made from narrow. This one, you must get a serious investor to come and do that. And that way, we work backwards now, and the, market, the, the hides and skin will get an end, will get a market where they are going to sell them. And their prices will go up, and once the prices go up, then the people will know the value. Because now you, you know where you're going to sell. At the moment, where are you going to sell that skin? Right. There's no way you're going to sell. And, and I want to take more questions from the audience. Uh, uh, Mashirima is standing by. But before I do that, uh, very quickly, Senator uh, Ledama. I, I think, uh, uh, Lenis, uh, I've been listening to the way we're discussing this. And I think um, I'm going to mix it a little bit with Swahili so that for the benefit of others who cannot speak uh, English. My Swahili is terrible, but I'll butcher it and hopefully make the point. I think what we require is collaborative efforts. You asked a very, very good question. Is what is it that we as leaders, tutafanya vipi? Na ile kitu naona ni kwamba lazima sisi wote tuje pamoja. Ili tuweze kuangalia katika hii show, ama maonesho haya ambaye atakuja, yako leo na kesho. Je, ni wanyama wagani ambaye tuneeza chagua, wala ambaye waneeza ishi huku kwetu, na wafugaji wetu waeze kufaidika. I think that is very key. And I think we also must be able to reach out to the people. Tuzungumze na, na wakulima. Tuwaeleze ya kwamba, kwa sasa, maisha ya jana ya kuwa na ngombe wengi, yu imebadilika. Sasa lazima uchegue ngombe wa chache, na nafuraia kwa sababu tuko na hiyo tanari, nafuraia pia kwa sababu nasikizi ya kwamba tutakuwa na kichinjio, ili ambaye vitu zote zikutafanyika hapo. Lazima pia tuangalie ekonomia yetu hapa naru. Ukiangalia kama Masai Mara na juzi tulikuwa na wa, nini wanabiashara wote wale ambao pia wako Masai Mara ambao wananunua nyama yao kutoka Nairobi na hiyo nyama wajui imechinjwa kutoka hapa asubuhi imewekwa pick up imepelekwa Nairobi imaoshwa kidogo imauzwa bei ya juu sasa ni lazima pia sisi tuseme je bwana Poro umesema ni lazima sisi wenyewe tuje hapa lakini wacha ni kueleza kitu kimoja ambaye ni, ni ukweli Ni vigumu sana sisi wenyewe hapa tu, tuchukue hiyo risk ambaye ule investor ametoka nje anaweza kuwa tayari kuchukua hiyo risk. A big example is what is happening in Transmara Sugar Company. Transmara Sugar Company which is there it is not always making profit but they are making a big losses. Ukizungumza kuhusu hata hiyo hiyo um, cereal board ile ambaye iko kule uh, uh, Nakuru ama board ya Narok na Nakuru the problem is that sisi wenyewe hatutai kutumia vitu zetu. Na ni lazima kuna sheria katika seneti sasa ambaye tuna, tuna debate, ambaye naito warehousing and receipting bill, ambaye kwa sababu serikali zetu ni chache, ni changa. Our devolution is still very young. We have to figure out how do we come together, how do we discuss this. Because I know, and even from watching the piece that uh, Mashirima showed here, there are certain breeds which may not be um, they may not be able to survive in this environment. So I think selective, selecting that breed and coming to the realization that times have changed. Wakati ni sasa, lazima to badlishe. And we're very lucky because the, the youth in this, in this county, they're about 80, 70%. So zile customs and traditions, zile zamani, utakuta pengine ni wazee wachache, bado wanazingatia sana. So, Tuko na wakati ambaye, nasema, 
we are pregnant with ideas, now let us move there and ensure that we involve the community so that if it is even that local investors who are here, we know. Kuna watu kama kina Armaji, kuna watu wengine kutoka pandele ya, ya Masai Mara, ambaye wako na mashamba kubwa na ngombe wengi, lakini we are not ready to take that risk. Right, and you raised the question of breeds, and I have to bring in uh, Julius Kiptarus again. Is this a conversation you would like to weigh in on, especially on advising an arid area like Narok, on what breeds to keep? Yeah, we will uh, definitely, because uh, Narok County is an agro-pastoral uh, county, and I think the breeds which uh, will do very well here we, for, for dairy production is ashes, jerseys, ganses, and even higher altitude, you can have uh, Frisians in uh, Lolunga down there in the higher altitude. They do, they, they, they do very well there. So those are the areas where farmers will be encouraged to keep uh, those types of breed. And I think uh, farmers in uh, Lolunga recently, I think we, as a national government, we have given them infrastructure. First Mil of all, is, is, is that information that you've just shared, including what sounds to me like a map? Is that available to the county government? It's available, it's available. To the county government? It's available, yes. That's right. Yeah. Let's just take a few more questions. Uh, Mashirima? Nam, wacha nianze hapa. Kuna mmoja mbaya na swali kuhusiana na maswala ya madaktari wa mifugo. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Joseph Siparo. Uh, mimi ningependa kusema shukrani bana governor kwa kulete haya maonyesho ya siku ya leo na kesho. Lakini swali langu ni jee. Waweza kuongezea hawa wakulima eh, madaktari uh, these extension uh, agricultural extension officers pale mashinani kwa sababu sasa hivi ni wachache wale ambayo wanatumika zaidi ni private ikiwa kama unaweza kuongezea hawa inafikiri watafaidika la pili ni kwamba hili swala la AI artificial insemination watu wetu wengi hawafahamu je waweza kuwezesha your department ya uh, livestock and uh, agricultural livestock department ili wawese kufikia wakulima waelimishe wao vizuri ni hayo machache ngawaje mimi naona ya kwamba utahitajika tena kuanzisha maonyesho kadha wa kadha kwa sababu sasa hivi naona maswali ni mengi kuhusu sio kuhusu wafugaji peke yake ufugaji wa, 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 wa mifugo lakini naona naye pia Ma, maswala mengi kuhusu mimea naye yanatokea kwa sababu wao ni wakulima wa aina yote. Asante. Na mwacha tupate swali lingine hapa. Na kutokana na muda naomba kwa heshima yako swali moja. Uh, majina yangu ni Simelo Lesangei na nachukua nafasi hii kumshukuru bwana governor kwa maonyesho haya na swali langu ni hili. Ni vizuri kubadilisha mifugo ili tuweze kupata mifugo wenye faida zaidi. Lakini mambo ya maradhi ya mifugo ingefaa sana ya shugulikiwe. Hasa swali langu linaenda kwa director wa livestock kwa issue ya vaccines. Availability of the vaccines when they are needed. Kwa sababu mara mingi tunapoteza mifugo wengi kwa ukosefu wa vaccine wakati zinahitajika. So tafadhali tuelekeze hapo thank you swali lingine hapa bas hata mimi naitwa Tom Lolo Igero nashukuru Mungu kwa saa hii na pia nashukuru sana governor governor amefanya kasi kubwa sana Narok e, tayari wakati tulikuwa na NHF ametupatia kulan ambazo sitaweza kuja ambayo nilisikia ni dhati ambayo inaingia kila ward na hiyo ni usaidizi kubwa sana hiyo ni kasi kubwa amefanya sana e, so na kushukuru sana bwana governor kwa hiyo E, kwa hii kazi ingine ambayo tuliona ya leo, tuliona mambo makubwa ambazo ni sa show e, Swali yangu kwa sababu ya saa ni hii mambo ya kiangazi Munaesa kutusaidia na njia gani kwa sababu maji na kwa mbali kwa mifugo yetu e, Asa naikara, e, loita, mali semu kubwa kubwa So kiangazi nasumbua sana ngombe na asa maji Sandi sana, mungu wabariki Kuna moja hapa kwenye mtandao wa Twitter anasema anaitwa Kevin Osido anauliza something great happening in Narrow County livestock economy town hall discussion however something is missing in the panel what's the place of women in livestock economy in Asal counties 
kwa majina naitwa Namnyak na shukuru sana kwa hii show mimi nauliza bwana governor atuongezee kula zingine zile za kuweka maziwa juu zile ziko ni chache na, ufi, na mambo ya wamama alis wamama waweze kununua ngozi ya ngombe na tuweze kuuza juu wazee ndio wana ngombe sisi hatuna ngombe kina mama wanasema hawana ngombe nadhani kuna mama mwingine hapa ana swali wacha tuwapatie nafasi he asante sana mashirima kapombe kusema haki tunaona ukiwa mkubwa sana kwa tv nimeshangaa leo ni mfupi sana Asante sana mwish. kwa majina naitwa Nancy Tamo former MCA Asante sana kwa governor tunai. Tumeshukuru kwa vile umeona wa Masai wanataka kubadilishwa ngombe. Wameishi na ngombe kweli hasina manufaa sana isipokuwa ni nyama na maziwa pengine ni haba sana. Upate chai kwa boma labda ukamue ngombe tano. Na sasa uki, vile umelete hizi ndume na fikiri itabadilisha maziwa kwa maboma ya wa masai na kuuza maziwa. Na pia utulete kama ni hii brookboard ya uhuru aje ya chukuwage maziwa hapa. Ndiposa tuendele tuwe kama kaundi zingine. Lingine asanti sana kwa sababu ya bidi yako e, naona barabara ya mau inatengenezwa na ni vile ulilete president akalonji hiyo barabara kwa hivyo tunashukuru. E, ningependa tu kuongeza kidogo ni seme. Vile Kamwaro amesema madips. Ngombe za Wamasai hazina madip ya kutumbukia. Naomba kama tunaweza pata kadhaa na hata unaweza lete kwetu leo Kama hakuna mahali ya kujenga mimi nitapeana shamba yangu ujenge dip watu watumbukishage ngombe hapo. Na kwa haya machache na shukuru sana. Unaujue ngombe ni sawaze. Wamama hawanaga ngombe ya kusema nina ngombe zangu ama nina ndume yangu kama ile imeshikuo emuo pale. Sisi wamama utatueka wapi. Asante. Hai, kina mama wameuliza maswali. Mwingine hapa. Si mama lakini. Asante sana uh, mashirema. Uh, kwa majina naitwa David Kuya kutoka Narrow County Kayan. Uh, niko na maswali uh, matatu kwa bwana uh, director wa livestock uh, bwana Kiptarus na kabla sijauliza maswali ningependa kushukuru uh, his excellency the governor uh, for organizing this momentous occasion. Uh, swali la kwanza ni uh, kwa bwana director ni kwamba uh, katika nara mzima kama kuna sehemu ambayo inaletwa chumvi ya ngombe ambaye ni gushi ni katika kaunti hii kwa hivyo tunahitaji chumvi ya ngombe iwe regulated vizuri sana number two, ni mambo na vaccines tuko bwana governor tuko na shida na, na vaccines za ngombe katika ile namna inafivanya kasi kwa sababu tunadunga ngombe tuna vaccinate lakini magonjwa hayaishi Namba, eh, ya mwisho katika naro county atuna maabara ya kupim, ya kuchukua samples za damu like the blood samples and the fecal samples that are very very important uh, uh, as far as uh, dairy and livestock in general is concerned so that is an issue that is uh, that should be addressed for us to be able to, uh, to 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 go properly in this industry. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, tujukue swali la mwisho ndio tuweze kufunga awamu hii ya maswali. Kidogo huyu alikuwa amechacha kweli ana swali. Wacha tumalize naye. Yangu tu nikushukuru governor Yangu ni kushukuru gavana kwa jila kutuletea launching ya ngombe. Mara ya kwanza alituletea ya kondo, tena ametuletea ya ngombe. Tunaona ni mtu anaendelea na maendeleo. Na kitu yangu ni kusema gavana leo tumeona mangombe kubwa atuja iona. Tukua vijana atuja iona ngombe kama hiyo. Kwa hivyo swali yangu ni kuuliza gavana, kukuuliza tu, tufungulie nini, deri ya ngombe narok, tafadhali, tafadhali. Tunaomba kama vijana wa huku, 
tumekosa kazi hatuna deri tufungulie deri kama hiyo tupate kuandikwa ndio tupate kazi tukua vijana vijana wengi ni idols na ukifungua deri kama hiyo vijana wengi watapata kazi tafadhali 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 kuna la mwisho hapo kutaka kwa mzee wacha nimpe nafasi swali moja tafadhali sawa nashukuru kavana na mabunge na senator kwa sababu ile kitu anafanya ni kitu wa maana sana. Mheshimiwa Gafana eta eta ya wangan tiado losholo armasai. Amore kena ngasa dol leo lord bar leo lord bar bare de joy gaje enye mara na jere jona joy ultrasat. Enye ona dase. Bi bare bara amara ena eta na jafanya tangu tangu lini ajafanyeka. Bare bara ya Ora bare bara la mau ne dua ga de set ilta ilta re te ngop mbaka da ra na arke saru no dua la baya Wore ngola na re jogi na ga jo do ngole yogo bonu amutingishu ni mege mutingishu amoge kera ta baya en dua ra sidai na lasma bi kias lagasi era sa die era sa die la do nai ne anda no nda de mbaka da riolo ni do na da sa ne lor bare bara la malo la mara lo to na ni nyo da sa na amara na gara emendua sabuki na 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 ara solo ngani le duada sikole gai ngana ke mayen en kaida sa no na si don kishu ne ga do ngana ki kishu gara da na no do ngani wa ki shampe kwa ma na no ro hinanu na kamera lo ngola ine no amia bili na mer no amia bili amsini kake were na na gara ngole e ya ki do do ngana ke ti lo ngana le midim ai nyangu na na kishu ne ro duwa ngola ajo ke ti debat ke mayen en kaida gara ke na na ni rasa ke do duwa si mere keshi Ira sadim bange ngase nyaga ngola ya ulunga na ga ya ulunga e sholunga na mbala wo sibitali ni Asheda Let me translate that uh, for those who did not understand especially viewers out there the MZE is very, very happy with the progress made in certain areas, including infrastructure. He says some of the roads have just been constructed in areas that were, uh, used to be very, very bad. He's also very happy about the quality of the animals he saw in the show today. He says he's a big cattle keeper himself, selling some of his bulls for between 200 and 250,000 uh, a bull. And he thinks that there is an opportunity to improve that through an improved uh, breed. Mashirima, that was a handful from uh, uh, the Mze, but quite a lot in terms of recognizing how much has been achieved in the livestock uh, uh, sector. And I believe you do not have uh, any more questions. And we're now going to the answers. And a lot of the questions that came, some of them did involve the question of vaccines. And we do have in our presence in this uh, audience today the Director of Veterinary Services, Dr. Obadiah Njagi. Dr. Obadiah Njagi, uh, if Mashirima could move next to him, is right in front here. I would like you to weigh in on the questions of vaccines because you can see the apprehension among the farmers. They are saying what, is, what, what vaccines are available out there, especially for the very, very uh, many incidences of diseases that they face in this uh, county. And while you prepare that, I'll also ask Madam Margaret Kibogi, who is uh, the MD of Kenya Dairy Board, to do prepare answers about questions that came from the back of the room about marketing the product that is milk uh, for farmers. What is the incentive from the Kenya Dairy Board to the milk farmers out here in Narok? Let's start with Dr. Njagi. Asante sana bwana Lina Skaikai moderator uh, nitachangamkia hilo jambo la vaccines za mifugo na ukiniruhusu pia nitachangamzia jambo la laboratories na pengine mambo ya chumfi ya ngombe. Uh, nikiwa director wa veterinary services ningetaka kuwajulisha wakulima wafugaji hapa na viongozi wetu hapa kwamba shida yenye tuko nayo upande wa vaccines ni kwamba ile system ya supply na demand azilingani. Sababu ni hili kwamba vaccines are life. Vaccines are not uh, things that we can uh, prepare and keep in the stock like uh, sugar and wait until farmers come. Vaccines are best made when you know that someone is coming to buy. This is because they are live things that have to be kept in what we call a cold chain, kwa baridi. 
So what happens is that we have an institution that prepares vaccines, manufactures vaccine in Kenya, the Kenya Veterinary Vaccines Production Institute. This institution has the mandate to prepare perhaps all about 90% of Kenyan vaccines. And what happens is that the farmers and the farming communities, those who keep livestock, always tend to go for the vaccines when there is an outbreak of disease. Uh, that happens to be the, rest, the wrong time to go for vaccine. The time to go for a vaccine is early enough because vaccines do not treat, vaccines prevent disease. When the, there is already an outbreak of a, a disease, it's already too late to use vaccines. And that's why the complaint now comes that to make me a vaccine, na bando wambe tayari wanerea kukufa. Ni sababu walikuwa tayari wambe pata magonjwa. Ukitumia chanjo kwa ngombe wagonjwa, bando watakufa. Sababu vaccine haitibu, vaccine ni kinga. Kwa hivyo ile tungeimiza wakulima wafanya na serikali ya, ya za county ni kwamba wafuatirie programs kwa, wakitumia zile county veterinary services kutengeneza programs of vaccinations so that the time of using vaccine is predictable and so that you can place your orders from Kevevapi at the right time and vaccines come before and most fall sick. Thank you so much. Th thank you, thank you, Dr. Anjagi. And uh, I want to continue on that thread of uh, expert opinion here. And we do actually have in the room also the Kenya Animal Genetic Resource Center, Kagrik, uh, Dr. David uh, Kios. Uh, where is Dr. Kios? Yeah, please uh, get the microphone and weigh in on the issue of the appropriate breeds. You had the question coming uh, basically as a general thread across the room. Thank you, thank you, Linus. As uh, the managing director of CAGRIC, we are pro providing appropriate solutions for every community. And in NAROC, we are working closely with NAROC so that we have the appropriate breeds for this county. For dairy, as you've heard, we can keep ashes, we have, we have them. The bull in the container. Ndume kwa mutungi, iko. And the government has AI kids. If the county can provide enough AI technicians, we can keep them as many kids as possible to reach each corner of this county. In those areas where we have uh, the beep, we can improve through selection and, and also use of could run AI to improve the growth rates so that those beef animals can reach the market in two years. You don't need to wait for five years to get the meat. You can get it in two years. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Uh, and I want, uh, just let, let me, let's hold on, David, for, uh, for a moment, uh, Dr. Kios, there, because I want to bring in the Mze who spoke in Kimasai uh, just for a little. What's his name? Kishoyan. What's his name? Next to uh, Dr. Kios. I just want to, to see. Tenye kaki. Tenye kaki see Elde ba yano ilashi tende. Ashe. So that you explain to, to him the issue of Ndume kwenye ndo. I don't know whether he... <laughs> asande, asande mze kwa gazi nsuri unabanya na nasikia uko na ngombe masuri. Pia tuko na mbegu, iku kwa ile mutungi. Na tukutumia kwa ngombe yako, ile umeselect, na tuwege yu mbegu mzuri, utapata ndume kubwa unaesa hata usa saidi ya iyo Elbu miambili amsini ulisema. Na tuko tayari. Mimi anawana. Eh, unawana? Leo mimi anawana hile ndo mekubwa. Anawusu hata milioni mwaja. <laughs> na mimi anawana, mimi anashukuru. Kwa sababu mimi anashukuru kafana yetu kwa sababu ni yae analete mwono mingi sana kwa kaunti ya naroku. Ashe kisho yon. Kwa sababu Thank leo, you. anashukuru kwa sababu hiko watu wajui mpeku ni nini. Leo anakuja kuwana. Na mimi ndiyo shama ni ya kulima ya, ya kikundi ya naitu wa landerera ili uhuru ya nasomea ndeni ya FC. Asante. Na nashukuru sabi yetu kwa sababu 
Hii hii rika ya huyu Mark Saruni ni njoo thendu hapa na nako. Naleta hiyo muono kuka sana kwa Rika. Asante sana. Issue of age set is very important. Asante. Uh, finally uh, Dr Dr Kio let's pass the microphone to Madam Margaret Kibogi we are going to hear from the MD of Kenya Dairy Board on the issue that also persistently came out of this forum today which is the marketing of the products and in the case of the Kenya Dairy Board it's the milk that is produced by the farmers of Narok County Madam Kibogi please uh, thank you Linus and uh uh, we want to congratulate uh, this county for this event and giving us this opportunity to talk about uh, dairy. Dairy sector in this country, in Kenya, is very vibrant with a lot of potential. This county alone produces 90 million liters annually. Of course, it can do better, much better. As a country, we are doing 5.2 billion uh, liters of milk and on top of that, we are the highest consumers of milk as a country, actually in Africa. For that matter, there is available market for this county, there is available market for the country. We want to encourage all of you to produce much more milk for this country. We do not have enough, especially when we have uh, drought as a country, more so this uh, county because of its uh, environment, sometimes we are not able to produce sufficient. And uh, the tips that we give is only three. Management of the animal, the breed, which has been provided here, and of course the feed. And this feed can be done and it is possible so that we have potential. We have seen many investors I know there are many factories, actually dairy processing factories coming up in this county, meaning there will be sufficient market. want to encourage the women mainstreaming in this county, and of course in Kenya, the cow belongs to the man and the labor belongs to the woman. However, we want to encourage this county to support the women so that they can be able to work together through cooperatives when they work through cooperatives, we'll give them the coolers which the national government will be able to support to enhance and reduce the post-harvest losses so that they can maximize on the dairy, make uh, dairy a yeah. business, Ma Madam not Margaret, just casual. I, I, Madam so, Margaret, are you going to yeah. be more specific on uh, the issue of coolers? I've heard you mentioning coolers and indeed a lot of post-harvest losses. Yes. It is a great concern to uh, farmers of this county. Uh, what are your immediate plans to sort that out? Uh, the national go government, through uh, Director Livestock, who is seated just next to you, is supporting uh, the dairy farmers who are put themselves through cooperatives to have uh, coolers. Once they have the infrastructure, they'll be able to be supported with coolers. I think uh, the Director Livestock can be able to emphasize that to give the numbers and uh, how far they have done in that uh, process. So we want to encourage this county to invest, to learn a lot from what is going to happen in the show for the two days so that they can improve the feed, they can reduce, uh, they can increase productivity per cow. Because if you are producing seven, you're not making any money because you're feeding that animal and you're not making money. We've also done research on the cost of production and we've identified one of the areas is feed. So if you are able to uh, produce your own feed, you'll bring down the cost of production and be able to make money, of course, through dairy farming. Thank you right. very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Margaret uh, Kibogi, who is the managing director of the Kenya Dairy Board. We are coming now to close to the end of this show because we've got to let our viewers go to bed before midnight and I want to, in manner of closing this show, discuss an issue again that has brought, been brought up by a number of people in the audience and by uh, Margaret Kibogi about the place of women in this conversation. And I want to take this round the panel starting from my extreme uh, r right. The traditional position as uh, a number of women in the audience have said is they have no say 
on this cow. So will they have a, a say in changing the breed in the first place, uh, starting with the Mushimole main? Uh, thank you, Linus. Uh, uh, Linus, that, that is a million question. Uh, of course, um, uh, the tradition per se, uh, initially the, the, the women really did not have a, uh, the, the, the privilege of having the ownership on, on matters livestock. But then as uh, where we are, where we are going, uh, uh, they have come to some level. And I think uh, on matters um, decision making, uh, when it comes to breed uh, uh, development and change, uh, they will still be part and parcel of the decision because by the end of the day, whether a man or woman, uh, the benefit is for the entire household. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Ledama. Uh, Linus, I think this is an issue that we must approach it through a bicultural approach. We realize the importance of our culture, but we also realize the changing times. And women play a critical role. There's a question which was asked about the drought by Siparu. And we see that affecting a lot, even the way women live, because they have to trek you know, um, for so many kilometers to be able to fetch water. So I think um, we've got an opportunity here. And we've got institutions in government, some uh, in the local government and others in the national government, which can now be able to empower these women. We've got these loans which are available. AFC, and I think AFC, with the proper uh, guidance in terms of um, insurance for these, um, for these loans and also for um, giving access to, to financial opportunities for these women, we will see that women will end up changing um, their mindset. We, they will also be able to become entrepreneurs. And uh, finally, I think um, we've got this Mendeleo uh, Anawake. We've got these chamas where now you are seeing a lot of women, even Maasai women, you know, coming together, you know, and putting their money together to be able to buy their own cows. So I think I'm, I'm really optimistic that uh, we may need to continue sensitizing the community, getting to the, uh, to the uh, few, uh, you know, um, senior citizens that we still have and encourage them to involve their women in this decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Deputy Governor Correll. Yes. The issue of women, the place of women, is a big issue in this conversation as it has come out from the audience. Yeah. I think what the audience is just saying is what's actually happening in the community. The fact that uh, women actually play a critical role in the development of the family. So, if we can actually have that paradigm shift in the sense that we see women playing more role in actually dairy production, in uh, milk processing and stuff like that, then the community will benefit because we normally say what a man can do, women can do better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Governor, it's clearly a big barrier, isn't it? Mm, okay. The, what I want to say is uh, in our own traditions, the Maasai tradition, the woman has a very important role. I think it's, it's, a mis it's wrong to say that uh, the woman uh, actually uh, had no right or was not possessing anything uh, as in the Maasai as per our own tradition. The woman plays a very, very important role. As you know, that those days of Moranism, uh, the, the Moran, or the men, used to go, as we believe as Maasai, to bring back the cows, because we didn't believe, in st we didn't say stealing, because you the Maasai believe all the cows belong to the Maasai. So they are just going to bring the cows from any, any other community. <laughs> and when they were doing that, the woman is always at home. She's the one who is taking care of the children, and she's the one who is taking care of the, of the cows, which the man is going to bring from wherever he's going to bring. And we all know that in our tradition, if a man marries, you know, first thing he does is to give the woman nine cows. We all know that. That is our tradition. And those cows will belong to that woman forever. 
Nobody will ever take those, those cows from them. That is part of our tradition. That is recognition where the Maasai were given to the women. And, and even those com uh, families which are illiterate, you always get a man consulting the women when they want to sell the cows. They always do. So I believe uh, that the woman plays a very important role and, the, and our culture, our tradition uh, recognize that. Uh, the only thing we want to say now is, can we improve on that? Yes, we can. And, uh, and I, I want to say that there will be no successful uh, investment if the woman is not involved. We know that. The woman actually plays a central role. She's the one who needs to be trained more because she's the one who's milking these cows. She's the one who is managing these cows. She's the one who is playing a central role in terms of even managing, even if she has not gone to school. She's the one. If the cow is not producing enough milk, is the first person to recognize is the woman, to say that this cow is not as usual. So we can improve on that. We can enhance on that. And, uh, and, 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 the, and it's nothing unnatural. The community appreciates and the woman will be well positioned uh, to ensure that uh, the, the, we have success in terms of improving on the bridge which we are talking about. Thank you very much. Director of Livestock uh, Development, uh, do you think there is a special place the woman would hold in driving change and achieving a new breed of cattle in Narrow County. Yes, thank you very much. I think uh, for me, the uh, role of women is very, very critical. And if you look at uh, access of resources, access of income, when you commercialize uh, milk uh, marketing, they belong to the men. When they sell milk in the morning, the money goes to the man. Evening milk is for the women. And now, if you want to... Uh, target the women, you specifically target them by giving them like these milk coolers we have. If we have a women group, we give them a milk cooler, they'll be able to control the income, both morning milk and evening milk. We have done that in Kajado, and those women in Kajado, they produce up to 10,000 liters per day, uh, and they deliver milk to, to a new KCC, and they are very happy. I think here in Narrow County, we need to urge the governor to specifically have some women group managing the milk cooler. That way you will empower the women and they'll be able to get some income and they'll be able to even buy their own cows. It's very critical. Thank, thank you, Director Kip Koros, uh, who concludes the views from an all-male panel uh, right here in Narrow County, Mashirima. Naam linasi mkuu ni kipindi ambapo tumejifunza mengi mimi mwenye mchana nilifundishwa kitu kimoja nilipokuwa na zurura zurura kwenye vibanda niliambiwa kuwa kuna madini ambayo yanapewa tu ngombe wa nyama kisha kuna madini ya ngombe wa maziwa na nikaambiwa kuwa ukichanganya hivyo vitu viwili basi utaharibu manake ngombe wa maziwa hapaswi kunona naitwa Mashirima Kapombe na kutakia usiku mwema Thank you Thank you, Masirima. And indeed, you've heard from us, from the county, of 1.5 million cattle, 1.6 million sheep, and 800,000 goats. This has been the Citizen Town Hall Live from Narrow County, where the inaugural uh, livestock show and auction has just opened and continues tomorrow with the attendance of President Uhuru Kenyatta right here at the showground in Narrow County. My name is Linus Kaikai. And from Narok Town, have a good night.